I'm sure you've seen one of these before. It's called a Newton Cradle, and it's a common office type of toy that you place on your desk and play around with it. And I'm sure many of you have played around with it like so. But what happens when you pull two balls back? Let's watch and see what I can make this do. I bet you couldn't do that. Well, the reality is, is neither can I. And what I did was a bit of trick photography. In reality, what happens is very different. And that is because what you saw before violates the conservation of energy. Now in this video, I'm going to be discussing the conservation of energy as they relate to collisions. I'm going to look at the difference between elastic and inelastic collisions. And what I'm going to do also is show you why this situation you saw before can't really happen in real life. So stay tuned as we discuss the conservation of energy. So what I have here is a glorified air hockey table. In this case, it's basically a metal strip that's got lots of holes in it and it allows this cart to move at relatively low friction. And so as a result, it's gonna move at constant velocity. And we're gonna use this to examine elastic and inelastic collisions. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use some video analysis to actually work out the velocities of each of the situations. So at the moment, you're going to just see a qualitative example of what's happening, but we're also going to do a bit of a mathematical analysis to see the difference between elastic and inelastic collisions. Now, the first example here is I'm going to simply allow it to hit the end of the track here. Now, there's a spring on that end and a spring here, so we're going to get relatively elastic collisions. Yes, there's always a little bit of energy loss, but we're gonna to expect to see that the velocity at which it arrives is gonna be the same velocity at which it returns in the opposite direction. Let's have a look. Okay, so that's uh, what we would say a relatively elastic collision. Now, obviously an inelastic collision is where it would stop suddenly. I'm gonna move that particular sp uh, spring I've got some blue tack here, let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see that the velocity has significantly dropped. The kinetic energy that it has is practically gone after the collision. And so what we say is that it is an inelastic collision. Now let's have a look at when we collide two carts together. So again, we're gonna look at elastic collisions and this cart and this cart have relatively the same mass of around 150 grams. What we're going to do is we're going to move them relatively similar velocities towards each other. Let's see what happens. We will use video analysis to look at the situation more closely. They seem to go off at the same velocities at which they arrived. Now, if I turn this around, however, I now have two objects that are going to stick together. So we have an inelastic collision. Let's have a look. practically stopped. It's not what you would expect. And that's generally what happens in car collisions. There's lots of energy lost through heat and sound and so forth. And it's an inelastic collisions and the two objects come together and they don't bounce off. Let's now change our situation. We're going to go back to elastic situation again. But in this case, I'm going to make this particular mass a little heavier. And by I do that, I add an extra mass like so. Now this mass here, is an extra 100 grams. So we now have a relatively higher mass here. And so when the two come and collide, what's gonna happen? What do you think? Let's have a look. I'm gonna again push them at relatively similar velocities, but because this now is heavier, it actually has more energy by way of its mass. Now we're gonna do one more. Again, we're gonna do an inelastic collision. Here's my blue tack at the end. My blue tack at this end, remember this is heavier and by an extra 100 grams, so 250 grams here roughly, 150 grams here. Again, I'm gonna push them roughly similar velocities together. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now I think we've got enough collisions to work with. Let's do the video analysis 
and let's examine them to see the difference between elastic and inelastic collisions. Now, in this case, I use a commercial package called Venia, but there is an open source type of video analysis, and I'll drop a description in the below, see if you want to have a play with some video analysis. But basically what I do is, is I plot points onto the video for each of the frames or the position of the object, and as a result, I produce a series of graphs that show us the position and allows us also to calculate the velocity and other variables as well. Now, the important concept to understand here is, is that I can work out the kinetic energy in terms of its relation to the velocity. So when I have a graph and I work out the velocity from that graph, we know that the kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared. So I can determine the kinetic energy before and after the collision from the velocities. So now let's have a look at the graphs. So here we have our first situation where we have the two carts of the same mass involving in an elastic collision. And you'll notice that the red dots here is the first cart and the green dots is the second cart in the middle of course is where the collision occurs. And you'll notice that the velocity of the first cart, the black cart, is actually in a positive direction and returns in the negative direction. And similarly the other cart is heading in the negative direction and then the positive direction. But what do you notice about the slopes? So now check out the velocities. How do I know the velocities? Well, the velocities is the slope of these graphs. That is, this is a displacement time graph, and so therefore the slope tells me the velocity. But what do you notice? Well, notice that the velocity of the first cart initially is roughly the same as the velocity of the second cart after the collision. Similarly, the velocity of the uh, gold cart is the same velocity of the black cart after the collision. What's that saying? Well, if I work out the total momentum before the collision and the total momentum after the collision, we're going to get momentum being conserved. And this is true for all the examples that we were looking at. But did you notice that also that if we work out the kinetic energy before and the kinetic energy afterwards, in other words, the half mv squared of the before plus the half mv squared of the afterwards, we're going to get the same value or roughly the same value. In other words, since total kinetic energy remains the same, roughly, then we have what we call an elastic collision. Now let's have a look at our second situation. Now here is the two masses are the, still the same, but the two are colliding and sticking together. Here you can see the collision point right in the center here. We have one heading in the positive direction, the other one heading in the negative direction, and then they stick together. Now if I work out the slopes of that, I'm going to get these values. That is, the slope again is the velocity. And if I work out the total momentum before and the total momentum afterwards, I'm going to get roughly the same value. But that's not true if I were to work out the total kinetic energy. We're not going to get the same values. Now, of course, I did this experiment two more times. In this case, I used differing masses. But in essence, I produced very similar graphs. If you look at the top, we have the same mass. They're the two graphs we just discussed. And at the bottom here, we have the two graphs where we have differing masses between the two carts. Again, we have elastic collision on one side and inelastic collision on the other side. Now, I wanna draw your attention to this table. I'm not gonna get you to look at each of the values specifically, but in essence, what I did is I plugged into Excel the masses and the initial and final velocities, and then I calculated the momentum before the collision and after the collision, and the kinetic energy before the collision and after the collision. I wanna take you through that. I wanna show you, therefore, mathematically, the difference between elastic and inelastic collisions. If you look at the first row here, this is the same mass and elastic collisions, and you'll notice that what we have is that the momentum before and the momentum after is pretty close to, this, to the same. So in other words, momentum is conserved. If you look at the kinetic energy before and afterwards, it's the same. So in other words, because kinetic energy is conserved, we say this is an elastic collision. We're gonna just jump down to the third row where we're still dealing with elastic collisions. And you'll notice again, momentum is conserved. Yes, there's a marginal difference here, and that's simply due to the experimental setup that we have here. But it's, we can certainly argue that momentum is conserved here. But again, you'll notice that the kinetic energies are roughly the same. Yes, there's a marginal difference. No situation is perfectly elastic. You're always gonna have a little bit of energy loss. It's close enough for us to say it's elastic. Compare that now to our examples where we're dealing with our inelastic collisions. Now you'll notice, again, momentum is still conserved, right? And it's the same here with the differing masses. Momentum is still conserved. 
Now, if you look at the kinetic energy, however, that's definitely not conserved. We have a significant drop of kinetic energy, both in terms of the both masses being the same and where we have the masses being different. We have a loss of kinetic energy when we're going from the before to the afterwards. And so we say these are inelastic collisions. So there you have it. Really, elastic collisions is kinetic energy is conserved as well as momentum is conserved. Whereas inelastic collisions, momentum is still conserved, but kinetic energy is not conserved. So back to our situation. What really happens here? Well, if I take one ball back, of course, I get one ball on the other side. If I take two balls back, I'm going to get two balls on the other side. And if I take three balls back, I'm going to get also three balls on the other side. Heck, if I go for one further, if I take four balls, I'll get four balls on the other side. In each of those cases, the conservation of energy is roughly conserved. Now let's look at our Newton cradle from a mathematical perspective. And what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at both the conservation of momentum and the conservation of kinetic energy for both situations. One where it's wrong and one where it's right. Let's first look at the right situation. And so what we have is, of course, I've got two balls going in like so, and I have two balls coming off like so. Now I'm going to use my yellow pen for momentum and I'm going to use orange for energy in terms of kinetic energy. So the momentum before here is simply equal to the total mass multiplied by the velocity. So we have 2mv because we have two masses. Now the total momentum afterwards is still 2mv. So that's no, no problem. If we now look at the kinetic energy, remember kinetic energy is a half mv squared, but we have two masses. So now the total kinetic energy becomes mv squared on this side. On the other side, we also have the total kinetic energy, which is mv squared. So in other words, total kinetic energy is still mv squared. So same kinetic energy. So we say this is an elastic collision. We now have here two balls going in, but we have now one ball coming off. What does that mean? So let's first look at the terms of the momentum. We know that the total momentum is, in this case, 2mv. That means the total momentum after here has to still be 2mv, but we only have one mass. So in other words, what we really have is m multiplied by 2v. In other words, the velocity is twice the velocity that it weight came in here. And that's why the ball ends up going a little higher in our example. So with that in mind, let's now look at the kinetic energy. Well, the total kinetic energy is still mv squared because the fact is that we had two balls coming in. What about here? Now, remember our kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So that's equal to a half. Now, in this case, we only have one mass. So we have m, but now we have 2v. Remember, it's twice the velocity. So we have to square that. So when you calculate that out, you get 2 m v squared. So what do you notice? Well, yes, momentum is definitely still conserved, no problems. But we're having an initial kinetic energy that is less than our final kinetic energy. We've created energy. We've increased the amount of kinetic energy. Well, that's not possible because that violates the conservation of energy. Well, I hope that's helped you understand the nature of the conservation of energy as they relate to collisions and the difference between elastic and inelastic collisions. Please like, share and subscribe. Check out my website as well. And drop a comment down below if this video has been particularly helpful for you. My name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. Take care. Bye for now.